So I'm back in the shop today. Today's Tuesday. I meant to get in here yesterday, but I just goofed off. Um, today's a nice rainy day. I'm taking a day off to uh, get a little work done on this project so I can move on to other things. So for a quick review, this is uh, an Atlas O uh, GP7 dummy. Um, I think this was made around 2009. I did some research on it. And uh, they made them in two rail and three rail models. And, and this is obviously the three rail model here with the uh, swinging pilots and, and such. I was um, trying to find out what the uh, two rail pilot setups look like. And I actually found some pictures on eBay. And uh, they, they do a nice job on their two rail models. But being that this is a three rail model, I got to put in the work to uh, convert it to fixed pilots and KDs for a more scale appearance on my layout. And uh, I'm going to get back to work uh, putting it together today. So I got some of the parts I cut off from the, the trucks. These were attached to the uh, to the truck so they could swing with them. So these will go in my junk collection here. I, I keep all my scraps and stuff like that for making junk piles for the layout and stuff like that. So kind of know where that goes. Anyway, sorry for the mumbling. I'm going to add these uh, detail parts. I don't I believe these are the cab visors. I don't think I'm going to put them on because I found photos with the cab without them and just having that rain drip gutter there. Um, anyway, just show you real quick how nicely these are made. The, the windows actually work. They're a little sticky to move around, but I'm just going to keep them shut. So this will go back together. And I'm going to get it prepped for uh, a little bit of uh, weathering to, to blend in with my other units. So I've got the pilots set up. i got all the signal lines and the air line on there. Signal lines weren't a whole lot of fun to put in. I actually had to trim these guys to tuck them in. I tried to copy the Lionel setup I have. So... I got a little tweaking I do on the handrails and stuff to straighten them out. But I'll show you something too. I got the truck side frames on. Um, I want to flip these air lines up. Proper look. Tuck it back in there. That looks good. So this is what the underside will look like. As you can see, there's plenty of clearance. You can see where I cut the tab off the uh, the pilot casting and that's what remains of the original uh, electrocoupler mount so I also should have mentioned I degreased these trucks pretty good too the uh, the original lube this guy had in here was congealed so nothing rolled well so I thought I'd have to take these gears off I thought that was a, a problem but just need to be degreased real good so I soaked it in uh, some isopropyl alcohol and cleaned up the uh, remaining stubborn stuff with some lacquer thinner and then did a proper lube on it, put it back together. I'm not going to put the pickup rollers back on. This is going to be a dummy. I'm not going to deal with the lighting. So uh, I think this is, this is almost ready to uh, get painted. Here are those cab visors I had uh, left over. I'm not going to put them on. I'm not brave enough. Um, I'm also worried about them getting cracked off here and there. Um, I also have these mystery parts that came in the parts bag. I don't know what they're for. I'll probably figure it out after I'm done painting it. But uh, maybe if somebody out there knows, they could tell me. Here's the rest of the parts that came off. The electrocoupler and all the, the roller parts. So I actually have probably the parts to do the sound. For this unit, I'm just not going to do it because of its intended role. So, there's a little glad hands I cut off the signal lines. Pretty nice looking engine. Hey, here's a quick tip about the hardware you'll find on these modern engines. Uh, most of this stuff has JIS screws. They're uh, Japanese industrial standard. And um, you can get a set of these JIS screwdrivers off eBay or Amazon for like $20. And 
they're well worth the money because they engage the screw head much nicer. You can apply torque without stripping the heads out and uh, they're well worth the money. I, I highly recommend getting these. The geometry, the, the shape of the, uh, of the uh, screwdriver and the screws are, are slightly different from Phillips heads and uh, these are what you want. Okay, so I'm getting ready to weather this engine. Just going through my uh, Polyscale and Model Master acrylic bottle collection here. Got some great colors in here. Some of these I've been nursing for years. Keep them in a dark cabinet. This Brunswick green, this is long gone. This is a Polyscale color that didn't make it over to Model Masters. So I'll be using this to uh, paint up the coupler boxes and do some other minor touch up. Um, Got some other colors in here. I use a lot railroad tie brown and grimy black, uh, engine black. Um, I use these quite a bit for weathering. I have everything or organized from light to dark. And uh, I understand Model Masters is going to be going away too, so I'm going to try to stock up over the next few months on the colors I use the most and then figure out um, what I'm going to replace them with. So I've got some other, I've got some old flow coil up here and use a little bit of tomato paint, stuff like that. So anyway, I got the engine sitting here all cleaned up, ready to go. Got my other weathering colors. I got my VL ready. It's all clean. So uh, before I weather these engines, um, I usually clean them up with some Windex. Just scrub them with a cheap chip brush and a uh, hair dryer set on low heat just to kind of help dry it off and stuff and make sure I get all the, mostly the fingerprints, um, you know, from handling it during the project. So, be getting ready to go here. Um, don't know if you noticed, but I did set my truck frames back on the right way. I've got the uh, speed recorder side underneath the engineer side of the cab. Um, from what I've seen in the photos, that's where it ends up. And uh, these do run long hood forward, being a Penzi engine. So that's the front. So we're gonna get ready to weather it up. Oh, I got some color on the uh, adapter parts here and I picked out some of the fittings with a little bit of silver. I think it'll look pretty good. It's starting to look like an engine now. I got the couplers back in there. That's what it looks like from underneath, so. I think it looks all right. And move on. So I like clean windows on my weathered models in my old age so I'm just taking a few minutes here to mask things off. As you can see I'm kind of using uh, some recycled masking tape. Um, I save all my scraps. I kind of stick them alongside my workbench or wherever and uh, I'm gonna tape up these, these uh, wind deflectors too. I don't know if I could do this one-handed or what but this is a general idea. I don't, I don't really do an awesome job masking uh since it's a weathering effort anyway a little overspray looks kind of acceptable so anyway we're just uh almost ready so here's kind of uh, an initial color test i like to kind of walk uh whatever project i'm working on out to the layout to see what it looks like under the uh current layout lighting um this tower. I think it looks okay right now. All I really hit it with is some grimy black and uh, a little bit of grimy black under the uh, underside, across the trucks, frame, dusted the sides, the fronts, the top, a little bit of uh, engine black in the uh, exhausts and a tiny bit of um, tiny bit of railroad tie brown across the trucks and uh, I, sometimes I hit the couplers too. I'll use a very small amount of rust just to, just to dust the couplers with. And then the last stage will be some dry brushing which will really help pop some of the details. So not trying to do like a real radical weathering job on this stuff. Um, most of the stuff in my layout is kind of weathered to look like mid fifties, uh, everyday service kind of look, not like, you know, 
mid 70s kind of apocalyptic looking stuff but anyway that's the initial color test I think it's I think it's coming along nicely and uh, I'm gonna finish up clean up the airbrush and then maybe I'll shoot some vid of this thing uh, cruising a layout I'll find something to hook it up to so here it is I think I'm done with it um, I did a few extra little touches to it so after the initial grimy black and railroad tie brown treatment with the airbrush I came back did a little touch up put a little uh, rust on the couplers here um, and another little thing I like to do is I like to just grind in a little bit of rust colored uh, pigment onto the uh, walkways and stuff a little extra here I gotta take off but I think it's pretty good uh, good enough you know and then um I did some of these uh, oil streaks with a really rare color in my cabinet called uh, polyscale oily black which is long gone lost to the times I guess uh, may have overdone it a little bit on the edge of the walkway I just wanted to represent some oil spills and things like that during maybe servicing but I think it blends in with the other units Let's see if I can focus here and then uh, I think it fits the layout well you know like I said I'm not a real oh my god weathering kind of guy I, I like to do weathering that looks like you know pictures you'd see when these things were in service so I think I'm gonna end this here and uh, upload this video and hope you guys like it find it informative sorry if I've droned on and repeated myself or forgot what I was supposed to say and all that sort of stuff but uh, I always kind of like these sort of raw YouTube videos where some dude is just doing his thing and trying to talk about it so anyway I think what I'll do next is I'm gonna clean up the layout here and set up a train for it to pull around and we'll, we'll film a vid so uh, I'll see you guys later